Hello everyone, this is Orhan. In this video, I'm going to show you uh, two concepts related to efficient market hypothesis. I will continue my discussion. I will introduce you two concepts that are essential to understanding the efficient market hypothesis testing. The first one is called autocorrelation test. Second one is called abnormal uh, returns tracking maybe. Let's start with the very first one, autocorrelation. Autocorrelation is the serial correlation between the returns, realized returns, and their lagged version. Okay, let me show you in a very simple exercise here. Assume that we have stock A here, and then these are its returns. As you can see, the returns are strongly correlated with yesterday. Like any returns is kind of like 0.5% higher than uh, the previous day. So they are, they are strongly correlated. And I will show you uh, uh, a methodology just to check this. These are the returns in column B, and then one lagged version is like the previous day's return. It's going to be the previous day's return. So for day one, there's, a, there's no one lagged return because there's no yesterday, there's no previous day. For day two, it's going to be a previous day's return, which is like 1%. For two, day two, okay, day three, the one lagged return is going to be one and a half percent. Etc. So what you need to do is basically just copy these things, starting from one percent or day one and ending in day four. Okay, so this is going to be one lag thing. Okay, and then two lag is or there is that can't be two lag for the first day. That can't be two lag for the second day, and for the third day, the three two lag data is going to be these things, okay? So now I'm going to show you to show you how to calculate the correlation between normal realized returns and their lagged versions, okay? The command in Excel is called Corel, okay, right, Corel, and select the today's return, normal realized returns, starting from the second day, because you can't select five days, there are only four days for the lagged version, just comma, and select those four days, okay? So it's going to basically calculate the correlation between normal realized returns and their one lagged version, okay? And you are going to see that it's <clears throat> going to be a very strong correlation. It's going to be one. One is the highest correlation possible. It shows the high strongest correlation between any kind of data. As you might remember, correlation is a number between negative one and plus one. Uh, the higher the correlation, the higher the positive correlation, the higher the positive returns, which is one. The lower the correlation, uh, it's going to the lower the, uh, the lower the correlation coefficient, lower the correlation between those two numbers. So a negative one is going to show you there's a, a strong negative correlation. So let's do the same thing for a second lagged version. So write Corel and then select these three days, which is two days. I'm selecting three because there are only three data for two lagged version. So it's going to be one again. So these two numbers basically is telling you that there's a very strong correlation between the returns and their lagged version. So you can basically predict tomorrow. So if somebody asks you what is the day six return, you can like without any calculation say that it should be 3.5 because it, it keeps increasing like half percent, half percent, half percent every day. So they are, they are strongly correlated. As you might remember, weak form efficient market hypothesis was saying that you can't predict tomorrow by looking at the past data. So if this was a real data, it would be a very strong counter evidence against the theory, okay? So the higher the autocorrelation, the stronger the evidence against the theory. Okay, let's look at stock, stock B now. Stock B is created uh, in a way that the correlation is lower. Uh, so basically just like copy these four days and paste it here and copy these three days and paste it here. So calculate the correlation again between uh, today and previous day. So it's going to be uh, less than one, of course, so negative 0.6. And do the same thing here, write Corel and select the data. So it's going to be again less than one. So these are not strongly correlated, but yeah, there's a correlation. Let me uh, summarize it once again. The higher the autocorrelation, the stronger the evidence uh, against the theory. The lower the correlation, uh, the stronger the evidence for the theory. 
Okay. So now let's use some real numbers from the market. So here you see Amazon and Apple stock prices for 2000, 2019. And then let's first start by calculating the returns. Apple return is going to be here. Just double click this tiny little square, drag it to the right, calculate the Amazon returns. Column D, you see Apple returns and column E, you see Amazon returns. Now let's do the correlations correlation between uh, Apple returns is going to be starting from here and then end it like 10 days before, okay? Because I'm going to calculate 10 lagged versions, okay? So this is going to be start at D5 and end at 253, okay? Close the parenthesis. So this is going to be first autocorrelation. And if you put a like dollar sign here by using F4, you do not need to do it all the time when you drag it and drop it. So this is going to be first order autocorrelation and you drag and drop. So this is going to be first order autocorrelation. This is going to be second order autocorrelation, third order autocorrelation, fourth order autocorrelation, etc. Okay, remember here we calculate the first order and second order only. Now I'm showing you how to calculate uh, uh, like first order, second order, and then tenth order. So let's do the same thing for Amazon. Okay, right Corel and select the data returns from here, like end at 253. And then do the same thing, start from second day and at 253. Uh, put a dollar sign here using a four function and a four function. So this is basically going to show you the autocorrelation. As you can see, the autocorrelations are very small. Remember my previous uh, discussion, I told you that the higher the autocorrelation, the stronger the evidence for efficient market hypothesis. And you see here that the correlations are very little. So just go to insert, select these two columns, go to insert, click this bar column. And these are the autocorrelations of Apple and Amazon from starting from first order and second order. Let me just like format the axis because the correlation, the maximum correlation is one and minimum is negative one. You see, normally it's something supposed as strong or the correlations should be something around one or negative one. They are so little, low, so tiny that they're not even higher than 0 0.2, 0 0.2, okay, which is 20%. This is not a test, but as I, as I told you in the beginning of the lecture, this is just like, giving you a visual idea about what autocorrelation is. So this is going to be autocorrelations of Apple and Amazon. It just basically shows you that uh, the autocorrelations are not very high, even they are even very low, okay? So this is one kind of uh, concept related to uh, efficient market hypothesis testing. The other one is called abnormal returns. Abnormal returns, we are done with the first methodology, by the way. Uh, abnormal returns are this. So first you calculate the returns, percentage returns for any stock, and you subtract market return from that. So this is going to be Apple return for the same data. And minus the market return. So this is going to be abnormal Apple returns. So it's Amazon minus market. So basically abnormal returns are the returns of those two stocks minus the market return. So how much Apple uh, investors or how much Amazon investors are making on top of on top of the market, okay, on top of the market index. So if you select these two columns, select until uh, December 19, and then go to insert, go to line chart, and you will see that like the abnormal returns, they should be tested. As I said, these are just like visual demonstrations. These are just like, these abnormal returns are telling you that the Amazon returns and Apple re Amazon investors and Apple investors are making uh, some returns, abnormal returns, which are around like 0%. If somebody consistently make positive returns or consistently make negative returns, then it will just like give some signals against the theory, okay? Consistently beating the market. In this case, it should be tested, but visually it says that uh, people are not consistently making positive returns and or negative returns. 
Uh, so that's it. I hope you get the idea of two concepts, uh, autocorrelations and abnormal returns. Uh, see you in the, in the coming videos.